it today, Tuesday morning. I want to talk a little bit today, a little differently than I normally talk. I really want to focus on one thing, and that is what is that super nutrient that can increase your lifespan, lower your blood pressure, help your hormones, and help everything else on the list above? Does anybody know what that one nutrient is that we're missing that could positively impact the landscape of our health? Just one thing. And no, it's not berberine. I'm talking about a nutrient that we all need that's been being removed from our diets that's causing us to all feel sick, tired, overweight, have hormonal problems, causing kids to go into puberty too soon, causing men to have erectile dysfunction, women to have PCOS, can even increase the risk of cancers. So if you guys think you know what it is, type it in the chat or or just type a one. Hey, I got a good answer over on Facebook. So yeah, on Facebook, they said fiber and you're absolutely correct. I'm, I'm cold, so I'm trying to tuck a blanket in around my legs. So fiber is the key, you guys. What what I, I talk about all, I realized last night, look, I talk about all the symptoms, right? I talk about all the things that insulin resistance links into. I talk about all that, but I feel like maybe I don't give enough of the, the things that we can do to help the insulin resistance. So I want to kind of focus on that today. And that one thing is fiber. You guys, out of all the things that you can do, um, getting enough of the right kinds of fiber in can change your lifespan. It can, they've shown that by increasing your fiber intake by about three grams can actually increase your lifespan by 10 to 15 years. Three grams a day can increase your lifespan, your healthy lifespan by 10 to 15 years. That's huge. And so why are we not talking about that when there's all this other crazy stuff going on? Then I'm going to dive into a little bit of a conspiracy moment this morning because I, this is how my brain works, you guys. This is just how my brain works. I'm As I'm listening to podcasts and information and stuff this morning um, on fertility and what's happened to us and you know, I've known this for a while that our kids used to hit puberty. Does anybody know what the normal age of puberty for us humans should be? Do you guys know what that, that age is? Can anybody type it in if you know what age our kids should be hitting puberty? Um, and that's changed drastically in the last hundred years. But historically, what age were our kids hitting puberty? Does anybody know? Um Type it in if you think you know. And if you don't, just type in a two if you don't know and you want me to just tell you. Okay, so a couple of people have said 13 or 12 to 13. Actually, would you be shocked to know that the human body is really supposed to be hitting puberty at about the age of 16? And before our food environment started changing, in the late 1800s, that's when kids were hitting puberty, was at about the age of 16. 12 to 13 is where our kids were hitting puberty at the beginning of the 1900s. Do you know where our kids are hitting puberty at now, today? What's the average age kids hit puberty at today? Does anybody know that? Do you want to take a venture to guess? So right now in 2023, what are, what are the average ages of kids that hit puberty? Lower, Lola. It might shock you. Okay. Um, you guys, science is showing that our kids are now hitting puberty between the ages of 8 and 10 years old. Right? Lindy's pretty close at nine. So how, how do our kids go from hitting puberty at 16 years old to hitting puberty at between eight and 10 years old? And nine is a really great average between those. So how do we go there? How do we in just about a hundred years, it's just over a hundred years, go from hitting puberty at 16 to now hitting puberty at eight or nine? And then we wonder why we have kids with big attitudes. <laughs> but we, you know, also when they're hitting puberty too soon, do you guys understand that it's affecting their growth altogether? So yeah, maybe they're starting to show signs of womanhood sooner 
or um, they're maybe having sexual interest sooner because their hormones are up, all of that, but it's damaging their bones and it can actually stunt their growth or cause bone problems in the long run when they're hitting puberty too soon. When our kids are hitting puberty at eight to 10 years old, their growth plates haven't finished yet. There's a number of things that are happening in their body that really need time to finish and that needs to happen by about the age of 16. So on one hand, things aren't finishing up in the kids' body. On the other hand, the kids' bodies are maturing too quickly and now there's like a clash of titans in these kids' bodies. They have big emotions. They have bodies that don't seem to fit where they're supposed to be and their body is at risk. So they're having joint problems. They're having bone problems. They're having um, developmental problems as far as their physical self. Some girls will never develop breasts or some girls will develop breasts that are too big. Boys will uh, lose uh, erectile function over time as they're hitting puberty too young. And is that any kind of life we want for our kids? So all of that to say, I'm going to go into more about hormones because that's this week is hormone week. I'm going to be talking a lot about PCOS, erectile dysfunction, pregnancy, all of that. But the one thing, the one thing that we can do to help our kids and help ourselves is to get in more fiber. And I'm not talking about psyllium husk. I'm not talking about just downing loads of Benafiber or Metamucil. We need to get in the right amounts of fiber and the right timing so that our bodies can do what they're meant to do. And why? But why, Misha? Why is fiber so freaking important? Why is it this super nutrient that you want to just blabber on about? Well, fiber slows down the digestion of sugars. Fiber slows down the digestion and absorption of fats. Fiber helps you feel fuller longer so that you're not eating as much. You're not overeating. You're not having the breakthrough cravings. And then all of that leads into mental health and a number of other things. So fiber is the one thing. If we could address just one thing in our diets that would help us completely around the landscape of our diet, it would be fiber. But for insulin resistance, remember that insulin resistance is this system or this disorder where our body's converting sugar too quickly and it's not a, our body's not able to utilize it because it's spiking up our, our sugar. Wow, you guys, sometimes I hear myself talk and I'm like, you know all this stuff, but maybe not everybody else is catching it. So when we eat, it's just actually... Uh, energy in our system. What energy looks like or is called is glucose in our system or blood sugars. So when we eat our body from the moment it hits our mouth, we have enzymes that are breaking our food down and trying to turn it into this usable source of energy for our bodies. And that's great. In a normal system, that's great. But how many of you guys now have been told to eat every two hours? Let's eat every two hours. Let's ramp up your metabolism. Let's keep it going. Eat small meals, but eat them every two hours. How many of you guys have heard that and um, have have tried it? How many people have done that? I sure, I sure did. So this isn't about like judgment because I did it. Like in my 20s when I started putting on weight that I couldn't get off and I'm trying to figure out all the things and I was active and I was working out and I was still having problems and they started saying, well, it's because you're eating big meals and so you need to eat smaller meals. You need to eat more like um, to every two hours and you need to do all this stuff for your, and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going to do whatever, whatever it takes, right? So now I'm eating two, every two hours, I'm eating, trying to eat smaller meals. I'm trying to not eat big meals and guess what? in time, the weight just started piling on. I remember even going, you guys, I've tried everything for weight loss and to get my health back. I even did hypnotherapy. Yeah. I was going to say Rita, but it's, is it Ritza? Am I saying that correctly? Is the eye short or long? But anyway, she says she gained eight pounds doing that method before she stopped. So it can work for some people in the short term, but what you're really doing is training your body to rely on insulin all the time. And when insulin is present all the time because you're eating all the time, now you have the system where you're becoming insulin resistant. You're piling on weight. You're having bloating. You're having low energy. Your sex hormones are off. So maybe you're experiencing PCOS. Maybe uh, you're having erectile dysfunction or low testosterone if you're a guy. Um, 
I got to fix these things because it's kind of making me nuts this morning. There we go. That's better. Now I can see everybody. Hey, so all of these things can be affected when we have too much insulin. All of this list can happen to you if you have too much insulin. We get too much insulin because we're eating too often and then we're eating too much of the foods that are converting into sugars. So when we, I want to dive into calorie counting now. So when I'm talking about fibers, do you guys understand that fibers have calories in it? So if we're simply looking at calories, how do we, how do we get in the amounts of fats that we need? Because they're high in calories. How do we get in the amounts of protein we need? They're, they tend to also be a bit higher in calories. How do we get in enough fiber that we need when we're having all of this stuff that's just piling on calories if we're doing calorie counting? Well, you can't. And so I see people on here and they'll be like, oh, you know, um, somebody who had bacon and eggs and maybe some avocado for breakfast. They're like, oh, no, no, that's too many calories. Cut out the, cut out the avocado and have some toast. Really? Because the toast is converting to sugar too quickly. And that's a problem for many, many people. So calorie counting doesn't work. Um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> right here, right now. Um, so I, I'm going to encourage you to not just lean on calorie counting. I'm not saying that calories in, calories out doesn't uh, have some efficacy, but I'm saying that when we're solely focused on calories, we're missing the bigger point. And what we really need to be doing is eating to reduce our insulin. And that means we need to get in more fiber. Again, fiber is going to slow down the conversion of sugar into our system. Fiber is going to allow us to stay fuller longer. Fiber is going to allow us to get fuller quicker. And so those are all things that can help us with being insulin sensitive. There's a number of other things, and I'll go over those in a minute. But I want you to understand how important fiber is, not only for this glucose conversion, but for your gut health. And so I'm just random all over the place, you guys. Please ask questions and ask and put, give me some input where you want me to take this because there are so many ways we can go. But I want to address your gut microbiome. How many of you guys have heard about your gut microbiome and about the gut and your gut health and how important is that? If, you, if you've heard a bit about it and you understand that most of us have a, a gut microbiome that needs some help, put a one in the comments if you know, but you don't know how to affect your gut microbiome out of, outside of putting in probiotics. How are you going to affect your gut microbiome? And why does it matter? Okay, so um, there we go. You guys, thank you. So your gut microbiome, we have different types of microbiota in it, and they're all actually necessary for our body. We tend to call some um, positive and we tend to call some negative. When we get this overgrowth of negative, which can happen really quickly when we're eating, um, right? Rita, we weren't affected by gut microbiome as much 15 to 20 years ago. So when we have this gut microbiome that's off, we want to think about things like yeast. Many of you guys have heard about yeast infections and maybe your skin gets itchy or ladies, you have female infections. You have a number of other things going on in your body ever hearing about probiotics or prebiotics, right, Rita? Because our prebiotics were just in naturally in our food. So our gut microbiome gets thrown off because we're getting too much sugar into our gut and not enough fiber. So when we start feeding our gut sugar, those negative gut microbiome thrive. They love sugar. And the more they grow, so you have this balance in your gut, or you should have good and bad, right? You start eating so much sugar, it's converting into glucose too quickly and it's sitting in the, in the gut and now it's feeding this negative gut microbiome. And so it's growing and growing and growing and the good microbiome is getting smaller and smaller. And now we have this beast in our gut that's making us sick and making us hungry because now this negative gut microbiome wants to be fed. So what's, it, what's the one food that this negative gut microbiome or the one nutrient this may, negative gut microbiome nutrient, maybe not the right word, thrive on. What is it that, that's going to make it grow and be happy? Sugar. Okay. 
So if we have this out of control gut microbiome, we need to balance out our sugar and allow that to come down as well and allow our gut microbiome to start getting more normal. Why is all of that important? Why is it? Because our gut is one of the biggest organs or is the biggest organ internally in our body. So when our gut, meaning our stomach, our intestines is sick, the rest of our body gets sick too. When there's inflammation and problems going on in your intestinal tract, that's going to leak out into your heart, your liver, your lungs, your eyes, your hair, every other thing. Also, 70% of your, um, yeah, so 70% of your immune system is held or your immune cells are held in your gut. So you guys feel like as you're getting heavier, as you're having these other problems, you start to feel like you're more susceptible to the flu, to colds, to allergies, to a number of things that just everything that comes through, you get sick with it. It comes back down to your gut. Your immune cells aren't built in your gut, but they're stored in your gut. So if that gut microbiome is negative and it's destroying your immune cells, then um, your immune cells can't do their job. And um, now we're having problems. Okay, guys, I'm going to just say this right now. This is not a political page. I'm here to help people's um people's uh, health. So I'm not going to dive into politics and I do not appreciate people throwing them up on my page. Um, so I really want to help people's health and I understand there's things going on in the world, but this is not the place or time. So when we have this colonoscopy, you can rest your gut after. So today, if you're going through a colonoscopy tomorrow, that prep is horrible. I, I, haven't done a colonoscopy for a while. I need to, but I, I hate the prep for colonoscopies. I just hate it. And the last time I went through one, I was fairly awake for most of it and got to see what was going on. That was crazy. But I'd love to hear um, how you how you fare with that. So reset your gut after. Yeah. So you guys, one of the things, the easiest way that you can help your gut to start to reset is to get in excess fiber. Uh, not excess fiber, but more fiber than we're getting in now. So I just want you guys to start thinking about, you know, I talk about protein, that's important. I talk about fats, that's important. But I also talk about fiber. So the three nutrients that you guys need to focus on, that we all need to focus on, are fiber, protein, and fats in that order, okay? Notice carbs are not on that list. And so now, does anybody know really what carbs are? So we have three macronutrients. Do you guys know what the three macronutrients are? Because I did not. When I started my powerlifting journey, I thought I was all smart and I thought I knew all this stuff. And somebody said, what does your macros, what do your macros look like? And I was like, my, 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 my what? Um, so I'm, this again, this is not judgment. I just want, I just want to help um, everybody understand. There are three macros in our food. You guys know what they are. Um, so if you do, give me a one. If you don't, give me a two. Because um, when we want to understand carbs, this is really important in understanding what a carb is and what a carb is not. Yeah. So Joy, thank you for being vulnerable and putting that in here. Okay, you guys, the three, so what we, when we talk about macronutrients, they're the big pieces of nutrients that our, our body needs. Micronutrients are the small pieces. So like vitamins, minerals, those are micronutrients. The macronutrients are the big pieces. And the three macronutrients are these. Carbohydrates, um, protein, and fats. I always want to say fiber, okay? But it's carbohydrates, protein, and fats. So the first thing I want to say is, think about this. If it's not a fat and it's not a protein, then it is a carbohydrate, okay? Now, some proteins are both, both have fats and carbohydrates in them, but if it's not classified as a fat and it's not classified as a protein, then it is a carbohydrate. 
So why am I going on about that and what does that mean? When we think about carbohydrates, most of us think about things like breads, rice, pasta, right? But we don't think about things like fruits, apples, oranges, bananas, pears, pineapples, peaches, or maybe you do. But then even if you think about those as carbohydrates, do you often think about green beans, spinach, broccoli being carbohydrates? Because they are. Remember, if it's not a, a fat, oops, my fingers are backwards. If it's not a fat and it's not a protein, it is a carbohydrate. Um, so you need to understand that. So when we look at our choice of carbohydrates, because we don't want to spike our insulin, what, what some of the things that we can do are to make sure that we're getting carbohydrates in our vegetables first. They're nutrient dense and lower in carbohydrates than the fruits. Um, and you want to focus on ones that are grown above ground and the darker the color, the better. Okay. That's an indication of the nutrient density in them. So above ground, darker colored vegetables first as your carbohydrates, and then you can have other carbohydrates later if you've done your plate well on the other ways. But fiber, so I didn't list fiber in there, right? Fats, protein, carbohydrates. Well, then where does fiber fall in? So fiber is a non-digestible carbohydrate, okay? So when you look at the calorie count on your labels, there's a number of things that are making up those calories. So fats, and they're high in calories, but guess what? They also don't spike your insulin, or if they do very, very, very minutely. So fats are not gonna spike your insulin. And by the way, the fat in your bloodstream is not from the fats in the diet, it's from the sugar. Okay, so then proteins, they will spike your insulin about half as much as carbohydrates, but they do spike your insulin because it converts part of the proteins convert into glucose for energy in your system. Part of it goes to the building blocks for your muscles. So fats and proteins are a couple of things that we should really focus on in the way of eating to keep our insulin under control, right? Um, now, if you take those two away and we're now looking at carbohydrates, fiber is an undigestible carbohydrate. So in, in the carbohydrates, we have a lot of things that convert into sugars and then we have the fibers. The fibers are not converting into sugars, although they have some caloric value and they don't spike your insulin. Fibers don't spike your insulin. So when we look at things that are like high glycemic, to low glycemic, because this used to confuse the hell out of me, you guys. High glycemic, medium glycemic, low glycemic. The difference in the glycemic scale is an indicator of how much fiber is in them. And why do I say that? It's because it is a difference in how quickly that food is converting into sugar. That's all the glycemic scale really is at the bottom line is how quickly your food is converting into sugar in your system. So high on the glycemic scale means that's a food that's going to convert really rapidly into sugar in your system. Low on the glycemic scale means it's going to convert less rapidly into sugar in your system. Okay. Interestingly enough, foods that are high in fiber are lower in the glycemic scale. Foods that are high in fiber are lower in the glycemic scale. And what's been stripped out of our foods when we started getting sick, Ritza was talking about it earlier. We didn't have these, we didn't have all these metabolic disorders. We didn't have kids going into puberties too soon. We didn't have all this brain fog and, and as much mental disorder. We didn't have all of the fibromyalgia going on. We didn't have migraine headaches so much. We didn't have this uh, obesity epidemic. And when did all of that change? When they started modifying our food to make it grow quicker, fiber, by the way, takes a while to grow and it keeps a food smaller and denser. So how do we get foods bigger and more juicy and more plump and grow it quicker so it can get out to the consumer quicker? Well, we strip fiber out. Now, like my favorite one is watermelon. I love watermelon. I love pineapple. You guys don't. Don't get me wrong. And I do have it from time to time. I just don't eat it all the time. But watermelon, if we look at what a watermelon used to look like, does anybody remember when the watermelons came 
full of seeds and they weren't as they were a little bit more firm and crunchy they weren't so like <laughs> these all these words sound wrong this morning but wet and juicy we just didn't have this big juicy pulp inside the watermelon we had seeds and it was a little more crunchy and tart and that's what watermelons were like when i was a kid a little bit sweet but a lot more tart than they are now how did we get there we took the fiber out now i affectionately call watermelon sugar water in a shell now does that take away that it gives any some other nutrients no but it doesn't also negate the fact that they took fiber out of our food when this whole thing happened with fats two things happened they told us that fats were bad for us. At the same time, they started creating fats that were machine created, that are drenched in hexane, and then they started feeding us these canola oil and vegetable oil and sunflower oil and safflower oil and all of these things that take this huge mechanical process to create. And I'm gonna tell you where, why those all started being created in the first place, because it wasn't had nothing to do with our diet in the first place. But when they started doing the fats are bad for us, Ansel Keys, which everybody hung on to, even though it was disproved. Um, and then they started listening to the, the American public or the public in general and saying that people want bigger, better things, sweeter, juicier things. So they're like, well, we've got to remove the fiber in order to get there. So now we're being fed fats that are making us sick and we're being fed foods that are de devoid of fiber and now we're getting sicker and sicker and sicker within a generation. Our genetics do not change as rapidly as our health has changed as a worldwide uh, population. So, by the way, quick little note, um, seed oils. So I'll tell you what the good, what, what my consideration and what Dr. Bickman, who wrote this book, you guys, my book that I flash all the time, it's all beat up. Um, Dr. Bickman, Dr. Fung, a number of doctors like Lee Yao all talk about the fats I'm going to tell you about. They are not the seed oils. When you squeeze a food, if you can get oil out of it, that's a good source of oil. If you're not getting oil out of it, then it's maybe not the best source of oil for you. You guys all heard of a fellow named Rockefeller? Big tycoon, right? Well, so they're processing food, they're canning food back in the day. Food was canned a lot more, right? Um, we didn't have all the freezers and all the stuff we have now. So there was a lot more canned food. And what he realized was as they're, they're processing these vegetables and these foods, there's a lot of waste left over. And being the, the entrepreneurial guy that he was, he was like, well, what are we going to do this? I don't want to just, this, we, we got to be able to find a way to use this. So they started a process where they could take the waste product from the rest of our foods and start pressing it through and extracting oil out of it. Um, it was drenched in hexane, a highly toxic solvent to get those oils out. It was never developed to be a food product. It was developed to be a machine oil. So you guys wonder why when you go to a restaurant and they're frying stuff, especially these fast food restaurants, and they can leave that oil in there all day and cook at this high heat all the time and it doesn't just like start a fire. Why is that? Because that oil that they're cooking your food in was actually developed to be a machine oil and withstand that high heat. And now that's what we're putting in our bodies and then we're wondering why we're getting sick. So the five oils, the one of the things, the fats that I talk about, right? I'm, I'm really focused on fiber, but I want to talk about fats. So there's fat, fats that I want you guys to consider switching over to. We don't have any of those other oils in my house at all. And boy, can, if I go out to eat someplace and they're using those oils, I can tell it right away because I get sick. My IBS gets kicked up. I have gastritis. I have heartburn. I have all of these things just because of the oil that it's cooked in. But the oils you guys want to focus on, extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, you guys, coconut oil is such a gem. It's such a gem. It has antibacterial com uh, components. You can use it for um, your general skin health and all of that as well as cooking. So those three, butter and ghee, and then your animal fats. Stop cutting the fat off of your meats and taking the yolks out of your eggs and all of that. Leave those in there, they're important. By the way, when you take yolks out of eggs, the nutritional value of those eggs and the protein value of those eggs goes down drastically. Most of the nutrients in an egg is held in the yolk. 
and yet we're taking it out. Yes. So Lee, that's a fantastic question. Lee says, how do you know the right kind of olive oil to buy? Olive oil is tricky, you guys. And she's heard that a lot of them aren't really pure. So this is what, what you're going to take a look at. Uh, I wish I had the names of the brands, but what I do when I look at olive oil, if it says, um, if it says extra virgin, that's one clue that it's probably to the better side. If it's light, if it's any kind of light um, oil, then it's probably not pure olive oil. If it's in a plastic bottle, then it's probably a seed oil with enough olive oil in it for them to label it as olive oil. If it's in a clear bottle, it's definitely not the kind of olive oil you want. So the olive oils you want, you need to make sure it says 100% olive oil on the back and it's going to be more expensive. This is not going to be a $3 bottle of oil, okay? You're probably looking at $10 to $20 for that bottle of oil, but if you're not cooking in oil all the time, but you're also not having to buy medications because you're cooking in the right oil, it, it doesn't, like, and so dark glass bottle, um, extra virgin olive oil check those things on the label. If it doesn't say that, then it's probably just a seed oil with enough olive oil in it to be called that. And the same for avocado oil. If those oils are in a light bottle, they would go rancid too fast if they're a pure olive or avocado oil. They need to be in a dark bottle protecting them from the light and the oxidation that happens from the light. Now, can one cook with coconut oil? Yes, just not as high at, at as high a heat. Um, this gets into a whole other thing. We shouldn't be cooking at extremely high heats anyway. It changes um, the it changes the structure of our food and allows it to be more have more carcinogens in it. So you're more likely to lean towards the cancer side of things when you're cooking in high heats all the time. We do not need to cook in that high of a heat. And coconut oil stands up well to low to medium grade heating and it works well in baked goods and all of that. Yeah, so especially, and so Lindy said, she also heard from a dietitian that heating up olive oil and seed oils also becomes for you as the heat, bad for as the heat changes its composition, correct. So we wanna cook on lower heats guys and we wanna use those oils that I talked about butter to be honest the one oil that i cook with the most i have olive oil i have av i don't have avocado oil i have avocado in my fridge but i don't have avocado oil extra virgin olive oil coconut oil and butter but the one that i cook with the most is butter whole excuse me whole milk butter and i'm and this is where i become I, i've become more of a label reader than anything lately, but I read the butter because what I found is as I, I bought some butter in a hurry one day and I got it home and I looked at it and I noticed the color was off and I noticed the texture was a little bit off and that's weird, right? That I would notice that. But what I realized was that it was primarily seed oils or margarine that had enough whole milk in it for them to label it as butter. You guys got to be careful. They will sell you anything when when the tide turns and everybody's saying, oh, we want to cook with real butter. Now they're going to start marketing you butter instead of margarine, right? Um, but make sure that it's whole milk butter. Or you can use ghee that has some of the um, milk components removed from it. So for people who have allergies or problems with dairy, ghee works really well. Um, now, if it's not in the dark bottles, stay away from it. But even at that, once you open up avocado oil or olive oil, do you guys know how long it lasts after you've opened it? How long should you keep that oil around? Because I have some that's got to go. Harmful bacteria in your food. Um... You don't need to cook on high heat. And you guys, what harmful bacteria are you worried about in your food? So I, this is this is nothing to do with what I normally talk about, but I, I want to say this. One thing that my father, this great Native American man, told me was 
we've got to stop being so afraid of all of these things. Do you guys know why we're so sick all the time and why our immune systems are so low? Because, and I learned this also in an allergy clinic, why allergies are up so much? Because we're never subjecting ourselves to those things in, in nature that are just, that are just out there in nature. So if you're so careful to remove everything, your immune system is not used to it. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't ever worry about bacteria in my food when I'm cooking. I, I just never do. And yet I don't have those issues from it. So um, that's a good question. But I, cooking on high heat, if, you, if you're worried about the bacteria in your food, then why are you not worried about the carcinogens that are caused when you, when you molecularly damage your food by cooking it at such a high heat? Because that's more likely to do damage to you than any bacteria. Um, now, there are some rampant weird bacterias out there. So like, yeah, in some places you want to boil your water, right? Boiling your water is, is probably a good thing in some areas for that very reason. Um, and I'm not sure what bacteria is going to survive cooking. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're cooking your, your steaks so that they're still mooing, basically, um, yeah, there's a problem with that. Good morning, Melba. Okay, so, all right, that when we talk about that, now it's a good lead in. So bacteria in our food and how do we protect ourselves from bacteria without damaging our food? Well, that's when we get fiber in. Fiber is what's going to help build our gut microbiome, our gut to be stronger so that it can withstand some of these, these things that will happen. Um, now, when I say that, <laughs> I'm really off track, you guys, but um, I also do do a cleanse every once in a while because I realize that just in our daily life, you know, and our ba the bacteria in our gut does not always just come from our food. So I do a cleanse every, every I think I've been doing it about twice a year now. Um, I have noticed less and less every time I do the cleanse, but the first time I was shocked at what came out of my system. There are other ways to deal with bacteria than damaging your food. Okay. Um, and part of that's just being careful with what you're eating and that you're cooking it enough, but not overcooking it either. Okay. So like eggs that are cooked till they're bone dry, just go grab a piece of cardboard and eat it. All right. Back to the topic of insulin resistance and, and all of, all of this good stuff. So if we're talking about insulin resistance and it's causing all of these issues, and we know that the one thing that we can do now is add fiber. Remember, it's going to increase your lifespan by 10 to 15 years. It's going to help your gut microbiome. It's going to help balance your sugars out. Um, I do a cleanse from Melba's asking, what cleanse do I do? So the same company that does the protocol that I do, they have a great cleanse and it works. I do it right alongside the protocol. Let's talk about the protocol that I do that helped me reverse my diabetes, lose 55 pounds, get my brain fog gone, um, get my blood pressure down, um, helped balance my, my female hormones, all of that. Um, so the cleanse, let me talk about that as soon as I talk about this, but it comes, I, let's back up one step. Yes, the protocol that I do is there's a tea in the morning and a, a pre-meal drink, which is a lot of fiber, seven different soluble and unsoluble fibers that I drink every time before I eat, 10 minutes before I eat. That's what did all of this for me. Nothing crazy. I didn't do any really restrictive dieting. I didn't do any calorie counting. I didn't do any crazy workouts. I didn't do any of that. I took into consideration the six simple steps that I talk about, and I added this, this uh, pre-meal drink, which is fibers, phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals, and the tea that you guys see me sipping on every morning. So I'm gonna lead into this. The reason I love the system is it's science backed. Guess what? I didn't know at first, but this doctor who wrote this book that I love so much cause it's all tattered and worn. Um, and I refer to it a lot for the information I bring to you guys. Um, this doctor helped develop these products okay he doesn't uh work for the company but he helped in developing these products so 
he's a big proponent of these himself, these, because they're science backed and they've been proven to work. And because of all of the studies and the clinical studies and the science behind it, they're allowed to be in something called the prescriber's digital reference where your medications are found, only these are food. Okay, so Bernadette, that's amazing. She's been on the protocol for two and a half months. It's working to lower her blood pressure. Her blood pressure was 95 over 66 last night. Oh, sure. And Vic, the book, you guys, let's let's talk about a couple of things. There's a My Recommendations page where you can go find the book, Dr. Fung's book, a cookbook from Dr. Fung, um, and some of the other stuff that I use. Uh, it's all on My Recommendations page. Go to my profile, tap on it when the white box comes up. Tap on that again and you'll see my link and we'll, we'll go there in a second. But this book, you guys, you'll see, if you read this book, you'll see that a lot, a lot of the information, I do go into other doctors, but um, a lot, a lot of see, marks, you'll see marks on the book. I'm constantly reading, refreshing, because I am not the scientist who spent years studying. So I have to refresh my memory, refresh my memory, refresh my memory so that I can bring you guys information that's yeah, that's actually viable right not just some jim bro told me um but something that a metabolic scientist who spent his life studying metabolism and insulin as a result talks about that's where the information comes from i am not a doctor i lean on the doctors and and um, scientists who are specialists in the field to get you guys the information okay so the protocol I do is a tea in the morning. Why the tea in the morning? Um, I have, I was just on a conversation with somebody last night that was like, can I do the, the pre-meal drink without doing the tea? And I'm like, well, you can, but they're really made to work together. They both work well on their own. The tea helps boost your metabolism, helps lower your blood pressure or helps normalize your blood pressure. Let's talk about that because I don't want to think people to think that if their blood pressure is low, it's going to make it even lower. The tea helps <clears throat> helps with that. It has anti-cancer, antioxidant uh, properties in it. It has neuroprotective gene expression, which means it's helping expression in your brain as well. Um, it was actually developed as a mental health tool uh, to help with anxiety, depression. Um, it, it can help with sleep apnea because your brain is getting more nutrients to it. There are components in here that can cross the blood-brain barrier, which not everything can but it's also helping the metabolism. It doesn't break my fast when I do a, a short 16 hour fast, which I'm fasting this morning now, about 13 hours, because I ate a little later last night. I do this, doesn't break my fast, tastes great. Bernadette, what do you think about the tea? Do you like it? Because I love my tea. Um, there's that. So it's helping me burn fat for fuel. It's helping me have mental clarity and it's helping me have energy without the the like damaging effects of like that can happen with too much coffee or bang energy. Then when I am ready to eat, because we're what I just say, 13 hours in, so I have about three hours before I'll eat again. I'll just have this packet 10 minutes before I eat. It has fibers, phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals that help support everything that I've been talking about this morning. This has, remember I said the amount of fibers, and it's crazy that this doctor talked about it because he has nothing to do with the company. But the amount of fibers in here is the exact amount of fibers that the doctor was saying would increase your lifespan if taken daily um, by 10 to 15 years. So I'm doing this twice a day at minimum. Um, so, and I, I feel the difference in my body. You can add cinnamon to the tea in the morning. Yeah. The, isn't that crazy, Bernadette? After a while, the tea tastes great and you do like one of the first things i do in the morning is get up and like okay i need to make my tea it's not just that it tastes great but i know my body's like oh i i want to feel better i want to have more energy so there's that tea in the morning pre-meal drink twice before i eat my first two biggest meals of the day that's all i have to do you guys i'm going to get to your questions over here in a second but look at they they send you this bottle I use about this much water. I put this in, shake it up four or five times, drink it down, wait 10 minutes, eat, and that's it. That's all I had to do to reverse all of this stuff, okay? Yeah, Kim, I do two teas. On a normal day, I do two teas a day. And the cool thing is it's food, so it's not like you can, you're, 
like other medications where like, oh, I had two today. Now I'm, I'm kind of screwed. No, the tea, you can have it. I've had probably five in a day, especially when I'm sitting in lectures and I need, I need to stay awake and, and stay focused. I will drink the tea like a mofo during that time just um, because it does so well for that. So I need help with my insulin resistance is one comment. I already do intermittent fasting, but I haven't lost anything. Um, I think this is what I need to get my body working the way it's supposed to. Joy, yes. So fiber is key, but again, it's not just any fiber. And the intermittent fasting, along with the six simple tips I'm going to give you guys. By the way, there's an ebook for that. I'll show you all this in a second. Paula, the insulin resistance. You guys, I know there's people out there who are saying, do less than 20 grams of carbs. Do this, do that. And I'll, I agree with some of it. If you can do that, fine. But what I want is for everybody to know that this is attainable, it's sustainable, and it, it can work in a real life. I'm not going to tell you that you can never have a croissant again. I'm not going to tell you you can't have that bagel again that you love. I'm not going to tell you that you can't go have pasta or pizza. I'm not going to tell you that. We all know that we would do better without those things, but we all know that there's times when we just want them. So... This system helps you with that. And I'm going to tell you how I was eating when I lost my 55 pounds and it might shock you. So I had a question. Um, well, first Bernadette says she's had weight loss. Her inflammation is gone. Her pain is gone. Her skin tags disappeared and she's feeling great. Where's so that's, that's from the system, right? Bernadette, those things came as a result of doing the system. So this protocol I just showed you, I'm going to show you where to get it. And somebody asked, um, yeah, Zara, we'll show you that. Prefer the tea hot or cold. I am an iced drink drinker. And I know that, you know, I would do better if I didn't drink so many ice drinks. But look, I do a lot. Drink tea. <laughs> Give me a break. I, um, I love my tea iced, but. It still is unseasonably warm here in Maryland, or it is for me coming from North Idaho. Um, as the temperature changes and as it gets colder, I will switch. You'll see me have the tea more hot. One of the reasons I don't drink it hot is because I can't just chuck it. I, I'm, a, I'm a super drinker. Like I usually have, I have water bottles. I have my tea. I have so um, I, I like the ice because it just lasts me longer. But I do love it hot. And in the wintertime, I'm going to tell you where to get the system. But I got to say this. I created a, a chai blend. It's going to be in my book that I'm going to try and get out in the next couple of weeks for Christmas for the people who are doing the system on subscription. Um, but I created a chai blend that has, it's got no sugar or anything that you can put in your tea in the morning. Um, even though it has a little bit of a lemony flavor to it, that chai mix in this tea is simply amazing. Great wintertime. Plus, it has all these metabolic boosting things like cinnamon and what in it, not in it. Okay, so the system. Lee, let me send you a link um, that you can access. And you can just message me. I'm about to go there now. So... Everybody over on Facebook, YouTube, that's where you're going to find it. Just go to that link and you'll find my page. Okay, so now let's get to the page because I know everybody's asking and I'm I'm taking my lolly time here. Oh, let's fix this. I got to fix this. Too much stuff up. So you guys, when you over here on TikTok, I just sent the link in Facebook and YouTube land um, on TikTok. What you're going to do is tap on my picture up above. That's going to get you um, to a, a white box below. Tap on that again. And when you get there, um, you're going to get to my profile page. So so if I could get my life under control, we would all be much happier. There we are. Okay. Technology, I love it, but sometimes it just is too much for me. Okay, so when you get to my profile, guys, you'll see my picture up here. You'll see the red light symbols. Right below it is this link. Click on that link. It's going to get you to this page here. 
this is where you're going to order. The top one is where you order. Um, my website is there. There's a ton more information about the system on my website. The Six Simple Steps ebook I'm going to share with you guys in a second is going to be right here. Also, if you want to talk to me later and see if this works for you, right down here, add me on WhatsApp. I don't care where you are in the world, we can chat. Just add me to WhatsApp, send me a text. If we need to hop on the phone, we hop on the phone. Okay, I, I am going to answer your questions. Of course, I'm going to recommend the system because it changed my life. It changed Bernadette's life. I have so many other people that it's helped. But to order this top one here, click on that. That's going to get you to the order page. First thing you're going to notice if it will come up is that it should say Misha Fayant at the top. Um, it should say Misha Fayant. <laughs> it's going crazy. My real name is Michelle. I've been going by Misha for 30 years. Okay, then you're going to click on buy now. The reason you want to make sure that it says Michelle Fayon at the top is this. I'm going to be there to coach you. I'm going to be sending you emails and texts. And I, I was calling people this last week and they're like, oh my God, you really called. Yes, I really do call. Um, so you're getting 30 of the tea, 60 of the balance, and you get to choose your flavor. Um, if anybody wants to know about the flavors, ask. There's lemon, ginger, lemon, and black. All of them can be had hot or cold. The pre-meal drink comes in this great orange flavor, light orange flavor, so like an orange Julius or um, a creamsicle. Then, you guys, because I want you to be healthy, but I want you to not overspend to be healthy, okay? It is about $5 a day. The one-time purchase, a couple of things happen. You're paying a little bit more for it, and then next month I have people who are like, oh, my gosh, I ran out. I forgot to order, and I don't know what to do now. So don't get caught in that position. Um do the subscription. It's going to save you $5. It's going to save you shipping. So now that's about $15 off. You get this really great little hand mixer to help you with the mixing up the tea and stuff with your first order. And then you never have to worry about it running out. But um, you guys, when you do the subscription, here's the thing. This company is amazing. They will send you out an email five days beforehand to tell you that, uh, you, your, your subscription's about ready to come out and you can have a choice. Do you need to change a flavor? Do you need to postpone it? Whatever. It's not like it's just going to come out of your bank account and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot. So they give you a, an email five days before and user, um, just message me because we can fix that. The other thing is whether you signed up with me and you found somebody else that you resonate with better, or you signed up with somebody else and you resonate with me better, you can switch. That's your right as a customer to be under who you want to be served by. So if you would rather be under me, then you can just let customer service know. I can give you the number and you can take care of that. It's, it's easy. And I want people to be with someone that they resonate with because um, that's important. In your health, in how you get moving forward, it's important that the person that is helping you um, is someone you can you can resonate with, or you're just not going to hear what they have to say. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so for you guys, he, uh, user 343 says I that this lady explains this amazingly so much better than all the others you've listened to. I appreciate that so much. I spend a lot of time um, studying and learning to bring you guys information and actually just full stop. Um, I worked in medical for a while and you'll hear me stop every once in a while and be like, uh oh, because I forget sometimes that, you know, I, I didn't used to understand all of this either. And so in my mind, there's a lot of pieces and I try to slow down and, and bring it to you guys in a way that can, you can understand and that makes sense. So if that's not happening, let me know and I, I will continue to adjust. But I just want everybody to get the information they need in a way that they can utilize it so that you can get better. Because the whole reason I'm here is I got so much better, like Bernadette did. I got so much better. And in the beginning, I didn't understand all of this. I just knew that medical was not helping me. I was on 10 different medications. I was sick. I was tired. I wasn't getting better. And this was like a last ditch effort for me. And I really didn't believe that it was going to work when I first started in all honesty. And, um, but I thought, what, what else do I have? What do I have to lose? And as a result, 
I got to ditch a walker and a cane because I'm not in that kind of pain anymore. I ditched 10 different meds and three different pain meds. So Norco, Hydro, and Gabapentin muscle relaxers. I no longer take. Um, I still have a bottle of them somewhere, uh, but they're just they're like somewhere, right? Because I don't even know where they're at. Whereas before they were on my nightstand because I couldn't sleep, the pain was so high in my body. Um, and all I did was this, this thing. So I told you guys I was going to say what I eat, right? And I forgot that. Um, hi. So let's, let's do that right now. When I started, and now I want you guys to do better than I did. Okay. Just like a parent, I want you guys to do better than me, but this is the reality. When I started, I was working for Lyft and Uber single grandma couldn't work in medical anymore because i couldn't walk i was in so much pain i didn't know if i was going to be able to show up for a job every day so i was driving for lyft and uber um which meant for me the most lucrative times to drive in the idaho city that i was in was overnight so i would start about nine o'clock at night and i would drive until six or seven in the morning sometimes eight in the morning but I had a little compact car because gas prices, all that. Anyway, I couldn't keep food with me because I'm doing airport runs. Every ounce of space was important. It was in COVID, not a lot open. So one meal a day when I started was at McDonald's or Jack in the Box because they were the only two places that were open. And if you've ever done Lyft or Uber, there's no chance for me to get back to my house if I'm 20 miles away. I just got to do what I got to do when I can. And I still lost 50 pounds eating like that. When I was home, I would eat healthier. But make no mistake, I didn't have a perfect diet when I was out. So if you think that I'm telling you, you have to be some kind of saint with your food or eat like a monk or any of that, that's not what I'm telling you. I want you to start where you're at. Let's look at this like a ladder. You're here at the bottom of the ladder. Your optimal health is up here, okay? And every space in between, there's a rung on that ladder. Okay. You cannot go from here, the basement, to the optimal health by jumping to the top. That's, that's never going to work for anyone. You've got to walk a step at a time up those rungs of the ladder. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take you through. We're going to start where you're at. We're going to work with where you're at. And then we're going to start to get you healthy a rung at a time so that it's sustainable for you and attainable for you so that you're not falling off and it's not another one of those things that was just like oh there's this crazy militaristic woman um barking at me and i just i had a rough day and i can't do this and and now i it's just another thing i failed at no this is sustainable it's meant to help you because we are not supposed to be this sick so how long does it take um this for an average person to see results. So Joy, that's, thank you for that question. So the average person, it's, it's really going to be different. I'll tell you my story. And I'll tell you, a, I'll show you a couple of other people's stories. And then hopefully that will help you understand me. I had diabetes. I had hypertension. It was 180 over 150 at some point during every day. I had a number of health issues going on. Um, and within the first day, one of the things that bothered me, you guys, is I had had my IQ tested in a divorce. That's a whole other story. But my IQ was tested extremely high. And I was always very proud of my ability to reason and think through things and just see things that other people weren't seeing. And yet, with insulin resistance, my mind was like, like doused in mud. And I couldn't think clearly. I couldn't remember things. I couldn't speak what was on my mind. It was frustrating and I would sit in tears every day. So why I bring that up is day one, drinking this tea day one, I noticed my mental clarity back. Day three, I used to do coaching for subconscious um, work for people with trauma and whatnot. And um, coach or nurse Steffi, you guys see her on here as well. She was my partner in that business and we um, had to practice every day. Uh, these presentations that we would do. We were on a call on Wednesday, three days on, and she stopped the call and said, what are you doing? She said, I've never seen you so happy, so mentally clear, with so much energy. What did you change? So I shared the system with her, and just because she's all about healthy things, she's jumped on, and it changed her life too. 
is insulin resistance like diabetes? Let me answer this question and then I'll get to that. So how long does it see? So I noticed that right away. My blood pressure, I had my first normal reading six days after starting um, the system. I went into a doctor's office. My blood pressure was 126 over 84 for the first time ever in that office. Um, I started having, like I said, my mental clarity back. My leg cramps started going away. My inflammation started going away. I just had way more energy. I was starting to sleep better. That was in the first month. The first few days, though, I noticed those measurable results. However, in the first month, um, Rav called me back and said, hey, Misha, how's it going? I was one of the first people um, with him to help him. And um, I was like, well, you know what? Not great. I haven't lost any weight. A month in, I haven't lost any weight. I'm a little bit upset. Like, I thought this was going to work. And he said, just be consistent. Hold on. And so we had a talk, and he explained to me the difference between fat loss and muscle or, or weight loss. So when we hung up the phone, I went and grabbed these shorts that I had bought uh, before I started the system, thinking, I'm going to get into these shorts. They're, they're cool. They're the cool girl shorts, you know, denim, ripped up, whatever, for summer. And I bought them tight because I'm like, I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to get into them. In one month, those shorts were no longer tight. They were already starting to become bigger, although I had lost no weight because my fat loss was going down, but my lean tissue was going up. So be, be aware of that. At week six, that started to normalize a little bit and my fat started falling off. And by five months in, I was down 55 pounds. By three months in, I was down 25 pounds. Now, I'll show you guys a couple of pictures of some other people and we'll talk about that. Insulin resistance, I'm gonna pause and, and address this question. Insulin resistance is the precursor to diabetes. So when you ask me, is insulin resistance like diabetes? Insulin resistance is diabetes, or diabetes is end-stage insulin resistance. So it happens like this. You eat too much sugar. It creates too much insulin in your system, or insulin has to be in your system to carry that sugar out to the cells. When we're eating too much, too often, foods that convert to sugar too quickly, it creates an overload of insulin in the system, and that becomes hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin in the blood. Long-term hyperinsulinemia or chronic hyperinsulinemia becomes insulin resistance. Insulin resistance in long-term becomes prediabetes and then diabetes type 2. End stage insulin resistance is diabetes type 2. I hope that makes sense. So let's take a look at some of these people, okay? And I'm, I'm in there too, so let's take a look at this. Uh, okay, guys, here we are. Okay, so this is me. Sorry, my lens is filthy again. You guys, I'm, I'm never on my phone, by the way. Never, ever on my phone. Okay, so this is me in the light blue. That was uh, in 2021 when I started the system. My A1C was 7.4, My uh, and it's now 5.3. I lost 55 pounds. Hypertension is gone. Hyperlipidemia is gone. My sleep apnea is gone. Like I woke up with drool on my face because I slept so well last night. That would never have happened. I was waking up 60 times an hour. But everything on that list got better for me. But it's not all about me. So we're talking about the average person. I'm going to show you a couple of people. Um, I can't have everyone on these slides. But here's Alexis. Didn't have diabetes or any signs of it, was insulin resistant, has lost family members to diabetes, did this because she doesn't want her kids to lose their mama. She went from a size 14 to a size six. Her gut health has improved and as her anxiety. Um, now, this young lady here has lost over 50 pounds. She looks like she's lost more, but this insulin belly that she had is going down. And she feels better. Her skin clarity is better. She, it's taken her um, probably eight months to lose this 50 pounds. But she's also a smoker. And she also knows that she's not perfect. But it's still, even with all the imperfection in her life, even with not doing keto, even with not doing all the crazy things, look at the difference in her in eight months. If you could build your health and have that difference in eight months, would that be worth it to you? Because... I would love that. This is my friend Christy, bodybuilder. You can see the swelling in this picture. 
and the lean in this picture, two different years, same time in prep for her, full of inflammation, diabetic, no one knew. Um, this is a trainer who eats properly, who f does all the meal prep and all of that, started the system and it helped even her health. Competitive bodybuilder and trainer. So um, now Jason has lost over, I, it says 50, I need to fix that. I think it's 160 pounds now that he's lost. And uh, he started losing weight. I think in his first month, he lost 30 pounds and the weight just kept coming off. So men are going to lose weight quicker than women for the most part. But in 30 days, can you see that? Yes, but understand Jason had a lot of weight to lose. So his was more uh, dramatic, right? He also had a 13.3 A1C and his A1C now is also down to 5.7. Um, Cindy has lost over 120 pounds in a year on the system. 10 pounds a month on average is what she's lost and she's continuing to lose and she's continuing to feel amazing. Her husband has reversed his type 2 diabetes and he's lost a ton of weight and his insulin belly as well. A number of families are doing this because as one person figures it out, the others are like, either the other people are like, I want to do what you're doing or the person who's getting the results are like, I love you. I want you to do this. Okay. So Karen, her A1C was high, but she didn't have a lot of excess weight. She still has lost over 30 pounds now um, and is doing fantastic. Karen's weight loss was slower. Steffi, in her first three months, she noticed she lost this excess weight that she had. She found her four pack abs without ever doing a sit up. Her ADHD, remember we worked together daily. I noticed the control and the focus for her with her ADHD was so much better. Trying to be on a business call, and Steffi knows this, I love her dearly, but trying to be on a business call with her before the system was like 10 cats on cocaine in a paper bag. It was insane to try and get anything done. Now I can have conversations with her. Now we can stay on track. Her ADHD is still there, but it's greatly improved as well as her mental state. So um, it's been amazing for her. Uh, Dia, a, a partner of mine up in Idaho, cancer survivor, um, had endometriosis, had a number of other issues with her gut and, what, gut and whatnot, has lost over 60 pounds, completely changed her life. But again, this is another one. Her husband is on the system. Her children are on the system. Um, this young man is, is her son. He's lost over 35 pounds. He's a type 1 diabetic youth. Um, doing this at 11 years old. So yes, children can do it. Yes, type 1 diabetics are affected by it. Um, but he's gotten his health back, reduced the load of insulin for him, and he has less crisis now that he's on the system than ever before. And that's just a picture of my feet. So it just is showing. This was my feet when I started every day within an hour of getting up. This was my feet and out uh, a year later, after being on planes and in airports all day, I came home, pulled my shoes off. You can still see the veins in my feet instead of being swollen and full of neuropathy. So it's dependent on each person. It's also going to be dependent on how consistent you are. And, you know, obviously the foods you're going to eat are going to make a difference. Could I have gotten better results sooner had I done other things with my diet? Probably so. But it is what it is. I still got healthy. I still reversed my hypertension. I want you guys to know that it's sustainable and easy and that, you know, I'm going to be here to work with you through it all. So I hope that answers questions, Joy. Um, the average person, it's really hard to say because there really isn't an average person, but the thing is give it 90 days. It has a 90 day money back guarantee. Some people haven't lost weight until about the 90 day mark and then it just peels off of them for some of the reasons I talked about. Some people lose weight right away, but everybody starts seeing changes in their blood sugars, changes in their A1C, changes in their lipids, changes in their sleep patterns, changes in their um, anxiety and depression that's going on. Because remember your brain becomes insulin resistant at the same time that your body does. So your brain is as insulin resistant as your body is. And what that means is your brain is not getting energy either. So 
you're going to have anxiety, you're going to have depression, you're going to have brain fog, you're going to have all of those things happening. Getting insulin sensitivity back to the brain is going to help you also with your hunger. Okay, Why? Because when your brain is tired, it senses that it needs energy, it's going to cue you to be hungry because it thinks, I need something to survive. Your brain lives on carbs, by the way, carbs and cholesterol. So if the carbs are not being taken up in the system because you're so resistant to insulin, which is carrying the carbs to the cells, you have a problem and now your body thinks you're hungry. Hey, Labots. Um, so I, I hope that helps, Joy. So you guys, again, if you're interested in the system, I got to run because I've got calls to make, but um, just tap on my picture up above. When the box comes down, up down below, tap on that. Get it ordered. If you... Um, want to be coached by me just call me let me know my numbers are all there we can take care of that too uh but just get started invest in your health yes i know i i heard somebody say well well you know it's, it's christmas time but let's think about that too for me i was so sick i was i was a burden to my kids or i thought that i was a burden to my kids what better Christmas gift have I ever given them than a mom who is thriving, who no longer, they're no longer afraid that she's going to, to expire in the next five years. Um, they're no longer having to worry about, you know, her pain levels or any of that. Plus me, I'm a happier person. I'm more uh, effective with my family. You guys, this is an investment in you, yourself, your family, and you have to take care of yourself first. You can't take care of everyone else if you don't take care of yourself first. So do it for 90 days. If it doesn't work or you just don't like it, you're going to get your money back. But if you're going to start it, do it for 90 days. Do it on subscription so you will do it for 90 days. Give yourself the full chance to get better. It's not a medication. doesn't interfere with medications that you're doing. Hey, Keto. Um, so make sure that you're staying consistent for 90 days that you're utilizing me as your coach text me call me let me know what help you need let me know when you have like don't celebrate alone i want to hear the celebration too i want to know that you lost 10 pounds i want to know that your energy's back i want to know that your friends are like what's going on with you i want to know all of it the good the bad the ugly and the glorious okay so all right i'm gonna go hop on this call thanks y'all for hanging out with me i will be back tomorrow tons of technical issues this morning um that's why i'm moving uh, the internet down here is just insanely bad and i couldn't get things up this morning i will do my best to be on at eight in the morning and see you all then all right thanks kim we'll talk to y'all later Bye, guys. Thanks, Joy, Lee, Paula, everybody for hopping in and talking. Join me tomorrow morning. Bring your questions. Let's get them all answered. And bring your friends. Okay. Bye.